guys, it's Emmy Boxing, and today I'm going to be predicting the outcome of Frank Sanchez versus Brian Howard, which will be a 10-rounder in the heavyweight division for the NABO world title. And this fight will be Saturday, November 7th, from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles, California, broadcasted on Fox, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, and it will be the co-main event to the Luis Ortiz versus Alexander Flores show. And uh, moving on to the favorite Frank Sanchez, 15-0, with 11 wins coming by way of knockout, ranked number 40 by BoxRec. Uh, he is uh, an excellent Cuban amateur, had an uh, amateur record of 214 wins with only 7 defeats. Uh, he's won multiple Cuban national championships and uh, international amateur titles. And I do think he's lined up for winning a heavyweight world title in the next coming years. He does have wins over Jason Bergman, stopping him in two rounds, while Joseph Parker stopped him in eight. He has a KO win against Victor Bisbal in his PBC debut. He has a unanimous decision win, pitching a shutout against Jack Molawai. And in his last fight of March of 2020, he took on the always tough Joey Awako, getting a shutout, winning every single round, picking up the WBC Continental title and an ABO title, defending that one. And uh, moving on to his opponent, Brian Howard, 15 wins, 3 defeats, 12 wins coming by of knockout, run number 41 by BoxRec. And that's one difference here. I do think that Sanchez is way better than Howard, even though on box drag it's number 40 against number 41. Sanchez just has much more skill, much more pedigree. He's younger, he's powerful, he's speedier. I mean, he's just the whole package really there. And he's definitely one of the top heavyweight prospects, in my opinion. Out of top 10, I have him number 5, possibly higher. I mean, he's a great fighter. He's really more of a speedy guy ever since he joined uh, Canelo's team with Eddie Reynoso. Uh, there has been a ver uh, viral clip of Frank Sanchez sparring against Canelo Alvarez. And that uh, sparring session, he did look like he was going about 30%. I mean, obviously, he's taking on a natural welterweight. Well, probably now Canelo's waiting at 170. So he's taking on like a super middleweight, middleweight, I guess you could call him. And yeah, he's obviously not going to go 100%. He could kill the guy. <laughs> but um, that clip got, I believe, over a million views. It's very popular. But uh, his style since joining the Canelo team has just been way better. Before that, against Bisbal, against Jack Malawai, they were trying to build him up as a power puncher, but he really isn't. He's really a Cuban boxer, that great Cuban school of boxing. He also has some power in there. If he hits you with the right shot, he will knock you out. I mean, he's just really the whole package. As I said before, he's got very good speed, skill. Uh, and in that Waco fight, he really showed why Eddie Reynoso made him the fighter he is. He outboxed Waco the full 10 rounds. I mean, really outboxed him on his toes with the jab. He looked great. But uh, Brian Howard, his three losses are all by, well, two of them by KO, one by decision. He has a KO loss to Harvey Jolly, who was, I believe, 18 wins with 19 losses going into that fight. He has a KO loss to Umar Salamov at light heavyweight, who's going to challenge for the WBO Eliminator soon against Maxim Vlasov. And he does have a unanimous decision loss to Richard Rivera, who is 11-0. But uh, he is coming off a very good win. Or he's coming off a very good win against Carlos Negron by first-round knockout in his heavyweight debut. I mean, and that's a really good win there. Carlos Negron, it took Dominic Brazil nine rounds to knock him out. And on the, I believe it was Kaunaki versus uh, Areola undercard, he did get the first-round KO. And it was an excellent knockout. He hit Negron with a clean shot, and Negron kept his hands down. It really stunned him there, but then he hit him with one more shot, putting Negron out cold. And, I mean, he put him out cold, really. And uh, he does have a early KO win against Shondo Winters in the second round, while it took Joseph Parker five rounds to knock out Winters. And i got to say, the only chance Howard has to win here is an early knockout. Uh, he really does get tired after th three or four rounds, and now at the age of 40, not having fought in around a year and a couple months, um, I do think he will lose brutally here. And I think this will be his earliest KO loss. I'm thinking knockout between rounds two and rounds four. Uh, Sanchez just going to box circles around him for a couple rounds. Then maybe catching him up with some big right hands, jabs, uppercuts, the whole package, knocking Howard out. But the only chance Howard has, as I said before, is with a huge looping right hand like he did against Carlos Negron. But I don't really see that happening since Sanchez has excellent defense that will probably thwart off any attack from Howard. So my final prediction is Frank Sanchez to get the job done, improving to 16 and 0 with 12 wins by knockout, getting arguably the best win in his resume against Brian Howard.
in the first through four rounds. And it's similar to the main event here. Uh, I am predicting Luis Ortiz to stop Alexander Flores from rounds one to round four, and I'm predicting Frank Santos here uh, to knock out Brian Howard in that same range. And uh, yeah, that's really it. I'm going to be boxing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.